riding the wave of popularity or an art fair trailblazer. However you see 154, its scope and importance on the art scene are undeniable. Taking its name from the 54 countries on the African continent, 27 galleries took part, selling works by 113 artists, and Access Africa was given a behind-the-scenes tour by Toria Alglawi, the fair's founder. I'm the daughter of an artist, and I think that I know how important was visibility and international visibility for his career. And I was always very um, um, sad to see that there was no platform for all those artists from Africa that I was discovering during my trips. And I couldn't find them anywhere. I couldn't find the galleries representing them. There was no art fair that was giving them visibility. And I thought it was really maybe not only my duty, but like it was even more important that I created this platform. The fair, which in 2014 took over both the east and west wings of Somerset House, is a leading platform for artists, galleries, and curators dedicated to promoting all African art-related projects. It was very important that Africa reflected from the north to the south to, you know, all the way to Egypt, to Libya, because they are part of the continent. So it means that, honestly, 54 countries mean diversity. So you have influences, you have different inspirations, they, the artists are inspired by different life contexts. And I do believe that, you know, this is showcasing in their work and you, you are able to see a huge variety of the different artists and their inspiration. But there's more to art than just the aesthetics. Art has the power to inform, to challenge, and to be politically provocative. That's why 154 is also accompanied by an educational program that includes lectures, films, and panel debates featuring leading international curators, artists, and an art expert. This year we made a clear focus on artist talks because uh, we think that it's a, it's a very good format to get insight into an artist, a single artistic practice, and also to understand the methods and the mechanisms behind a certain artistic production. What do you say then is the biggest hindrance to these African artists going global? I think the problem is never on the side of the artist because I always, I strongly believe that artists will always produce no matter what no matter where but it's the whole mechanism it's a whole world surrounding that production be them curators dealers uh, public institution private institution collectors media and so on that sort of surrounds it that is you know should participate into the growth of, a, of, a, of a artistic practice and that as artistic promotion. So the hindrance, if I wouldn't see any hindrance because art is about taking risk on all levels. In fact, the only risk when it comes to defining African art seems to be agreeing on a single definition of what it is. Well, it's very difficult to see a common denominator, you know, the variety is immense, you know, 54 countries, the continent is the biggest continent in the world, so when you come to talk about North African artists, they are definitely different than the artists from Sub-Saharan Africa and from South Africa. I don't think that you can really define an African artistic practice. What, and everyone, you could ask that question to 100 people and you would have 100 different answers. What I think for my personal take is that there is a, maybe a practice that is more closer to life, <laughs> you know, to, to serious issues, to a kind of immediacy that is less, maybe less self-referential.